My name's David Wilson. I'm a senior design engineer at NC Engineering. I've been here 20 years. I started to work on the site dumper project. We have models in our range from one ton to six ton for the UK and Europe and we do a nine ton model for export markets. Today, I want to take you down the assembly line. We have a one and a half ton model on it at the moment, and I'll walk you through each stage of the assembly. So in this particular model, the engines are Kubota D1105s, 1.1 litre. They came into us on a stillage, and from here, then we will dress the engine with the hydrostatic pump, and the wiring loom and all the bits that go part of that. Just Kubota engines, Kubota engines up to three ton, and then Hyundai engines for the five and the six ton. It's a good reliable engine. Um, we've used it now for almost 15 years, maybe more. Um, it's never given us any trouble. It's just accepted well in the industry. It gets built up with a pump plate and the pump gets mounted on. We'll put the engine mounting brackets on it, we'll put the wiring loom on it uh, and get it ready just to go to the next stage. So this is an uh, engine assembly, all dressed and ready to go into the next stage on the line. Here we have some tanks which have been assembled. We put the fuel filters on, we put the caps on, we put the fuel level sensors in on the fuel tanks, on the hydraulic tank we'll put the fuel filters in, we'll put the cap on, on the valve bank and the site level gauge. The dumpers in 2004 when I started didn't exist. We, I started, we done uh, research into all existing models that were available and then we built a prototype um, for testing and we were testing a machine at the end of the year. And then we spent the next year testing and refining what, what we had built. Redone some work on it and officially launched the dumper product in 2006. Testing is very crucial. You have to test your cooling performance, you have to test your noise, you have to test your traction, you have to test the braking. There's so many things that you have to test. It, it's crucial to, to getting it done, to making a good product. There's no one way of saying how long testing's gonna take, because you just don't know at the start of a project what, what problems or what scenarios you're gonna encounter. Technology has influenced the design process quite a bit. Our larger dumpers are now CVT. We've got the hydraulic park brakes, automatically spring a plan. Back then it was a manual lever on the park brake. Emissions have moved on vastly. Uh, our engines are now ECU controlled, whereas years ago you put a couple of wires to an engine and it would start and now you've got a whole control unit and lots of wiring and People wonder why things are getting more expensive, it's uh, emissions. So this is the first stage of assembly on the dumper line. Um, the engine will go into the machine, into the chassis, the tanks will go on, we get the fan cowl in and we get the radiator in on the back, start building up our cast link and get everything assembled on, get our wheel motors and some limited amount of hosing connected up at this stage. Got to think about the strength of the chassis. Got to think of the location of the components and what the service access is going to be to the end user. That's always very important. You got to think about things like having hoses. or hoses going to rub through? Is wiring looms going to rub through? You have to think of the proper routing. And that all plays a, an important part in the chassis design as well as the strength of the chassis and the steels used in it. Our dumpers are quite popular in mainland Europe. We have a lot of big customers in mainland Europe, in France and Spain and Switzerland and Germany, we, Portugal, Slovenia and Czech Republic. Uh, we also sell into the mainland UK, into England, Scotland and Wales and of course here in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So this is stage two on the dumper line. You'll see there's a few more bits added to the, added to the dumper. We've got the steering column added. We've got high definition handrails which are good and long to give plenty of access and grip. We got the bonnet with the higher grab handles on it, uh, which are at the correct level, just about waist height, give you good stability. We got the wraps back end on it, uh, folded down at the minute. We put the seat on inside. We do some more work on the engine bay. We uh, fit the air filters, we fit the battery, fit the fuse boxes, uh, and connect up some more hoses and the front plate goes on. 
steering column was designed in-house. Um, we get it made by a subcontractor. We will then fit it out with all the bits and pieces with forward reverse levers, with the lights levers, with the actual steering wheel. Inside the engine bay, we've got the dust pressure indicator. It'll tell you when your air filter's clogged and when to change it. If you're working in particularly dusty environments, it may need changed quicker than the recommended service intervals. We've got our battery here, which is really easy locatable, filling for fuel. There is a lockable version of this cap. We have a strainer inside the fuel filter to filter out any coarse material. We have our fuel filter just at that point there, and this is the fuel sander which sends the level to the, to the instrument cluster. We've got our steering ROM, which is bushed, so it can be, if there's any wear in it, you can just change the bushes. We've got our accelerator paddle. There's only an accelerator paddle on these machines as they do hydrostatic braking. It automatically brakes, and then at a predetermined time when the machine has come to stop, it'll automatically apply, apply the parking brake. Um, we have that all worked out. Uh, we've got our high tip on our tipping levers, high lift and tipping levers. Uh, we've got uh, heat shield on the exhaust. We've got our hydraulic oil filling. And we've got a uh, gauge there to check that there's oil in it. And then this is the hydraulic filter. Everything here was, is within reach for easy service access. You can easily check your oil level on your engine. You can easily get at your air filter for changing it. Everything is, is just easy access. This is not like modern cars. You can get at everything you need relatively easily. It's not to say if you need to change an injector pump, it, it's more of a job, but all your routine service access is in front of you. This is stage three. We put the front chassis in. Uh, we'll slide the bearings in over the cast pivot on slide this chassis on, we put the wheel motor box on, and we've got our high lift frame here. Uh, the parallel linkage is underneath here, and that keeps the whole mechanism parallel as you lift the skip up and down. Biggest challenge when you're designing this type of mechanism is you get enough lift and get the correct tip height. That's the biggest challenge. Uh, the geometry and getting all the strength into it in the right places. Permanent four wheel drive. Everything we make is permanent four-wheel drive. These machines are what you call twin lock machines. Uh, the four-wheel drive, when one wheel starts to slip, it's a series parallel circuit. And when one wheel starts to slip, it will transfer the oil away from the slipping wheel and divert it to one of the other wheels where there is traction to keep you moving and not getting stuck in the mud. So starting any new product, you have to identify the gap in the market. You have to do a competitor analysis and then I do a thing which is called a quality functional deployment chart uh, where we can score all the different competitors and score ourselves and see what areas need to be improved on. I'm here 20 years. There's a good family culture here. I, I enjoy the work I do. It's challenging, still challenges me even to this day. And that's what I like about here and that's why I've remained here. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing a machine that you've designed from, from the very start, you know, from a blank piece of paper right up until it drives out the door. When you're sitting on it and you turn the key and you start the engine and you put it in the drive and you drive it out, there's nothing more satisfying than that there. So here we are in stage four of the build. There's some more things get added to it. We get the wheels added. We get the high lift rams added. We get the skip added. We get a little bit more trimming out on the steering column, serial plate added. Everything about this machine is recorded on its PDA. Everything, and that will all then be entered after the final inspection. That'll all be entered onto a computer and kept. Everything is recorded on the sheet, all the serial numbers of all the components, so that if someone comes to us, even 10, 20 years down the line, they say, I've got machine serial number, whatever. I need this steering unit. We can look back. We've got the serial number of that steering unit and we can go and get them the exact same steer steering unit again. We've got, uh, the system is totally recordable. It records who done each job so that we know that if there's a fault at any time, we can go back and say, did you do this job? We actually use a system 
where we have coloured lanes and each fitter has their own coloured lane when they tighten a hydraulic fitting or a bolt. The reason we do this is for traceability. So we've built up experience over the last 20 years of building dumpers so that we know that we can have reliable confidence in the product that we build. So this is the final stage of our dumper build. Um, the machine here will get all the decals fitted to it and it will go through a full inspection on hot test, hot road test. Yeah. So when we're at this stage, the machine gets assessed everything from top to bottom. We put a UV dye, dye in the hydraulic oil. We'll go and we'll run the machine. Then we'll come back, we'll shine UV lights all around it. We'll check for oil leaks. We check everything. We check all the electrical functions. We check all the hydraulic functions. We check that the machine is making the correct speed. We check it's braking properly. We check absolutely everything on the machine. We check the paintwork and make sure the machine is good to go to the customer. When the machine's good to go to the customer, we put a green sticker on it and it drives out the door, ready for shipping. At NC Engineering, we're very proud of the products that we design and manufacture. We stand over our products and we give good warranties and we're always out to satisfy the customer. NC Engineering, where quality comes first.